Grace to you and peace from God our Father and our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Amen. The word of God I would lay on your hearts for today comes to us from Mark chapter 4, verse 26 through 32. And Jesus said, The kingdom of God is as if a man should scatter seed on the ground. He sleeps and rises night and day, and the seed sprouts and grows, he knows not how. The earth produces by itself, first the blade, then the ear, then the full grain in the ear. But when the grain is ripe, at once he puts in the sickle, because the harvest has come. And he said, With what can we compare the kingdom of God? Or what parable shall we use for it? It is like a grain of mustard seed, which when sown on the ground is the smallest of all the seeds on earth. Yet when it is sown, it grows up and becomes larger than all the garden plants and puts out large branches so that the birds of the air can make nests in its shade. So far God's holy word. Dear friends in Christ, fellow redeemed. Winter may seem like a odd time of year to be studying two of Jesus' parables, which both involve farming, scattering seeds and planting, sprouting and growth, ripening and harvest. Wouldn't this text make a little more sense if we studied it in spring or autumn or even the summer, really any of the seasons besides the season of winter? Perhaps. But of course, if you know anything about farming, you know that even after after the combine, they're sparkling clean and put away for the winter. The farmers don't stop farming. Just because the fields and pastures are blanketed with snow doesn't mean the farmers all jet off to the Bahamas for six months. No, the winter months are an important time, a time to prepare for the coming year. Winter is vitally important for farmers. It's a time to budget for and purchase things like seed and fertilizer. It's a time to plan for and arrange the coming year's planting and harvest. And so you see, just like the farmer doing his winter planning, now is the perfect time for Christians like us to make plans for planting God's word in the spring and in the summer and in the coming autumn. Now is the time to budget for and prepare for the scattering of God's word in our community as we make our congregational outreach plans. Now is the time to plan for our own personal spiritual growth this coming summer. Most importantly, now is the time and now is always a good time to remember who it is that really makes the kingdom of God grow. Our theme for today is Winter planning for summer planting. We make plans to scatter the seed. God makes plans to give it growth. So our text for today actually occurs in a series of farming parables, more than just these two. And they all focus on the kingdom of God, or in other words, how a person becomes a believer. Each parable focuses on a different aspect of this miraculous transformation from spiritual death into spiritual life. And the first parable presented to us today begins with Jesus stating that the kingdom of God is as if a man should scatter seed on the ground. So just as a farmer goes through a great deal of planning when considering which crops to plant in which field and when, so too we go through a great deal of planning, don't we? When it comes to where and when we should scatter the seed of God's word. After all, it's only wise to do so. That's part of good stewardship. Stewardship is one of the things Jesus encouraged in his disciples. He even asked them once, which of you desiring to build a tower does not sit down and count the cost? whether he has enough to complete it. And so when we're planning as well, it's good to, that's a good and wise thing to do. Especially when it comes to the congregational plans for scattering the seed of God's word. 
It's important to consider all our resources and the best avenues for proclaiming the word. So here at Mount Zion, we have an outreach committee that helps with these things. We have a ladies group, which helps with these things. This is the time of year when we start asking questions like, how much money do we have to budget for promoting Vacation Bible School? Are we going to have the TVBS come out again and help distribute flyers? What kind of outreach seminars and events can we have in the coming summer months? Are we going to host a seminar? Are we going to have another evangelism workshop like we did last year? All these things help us plan for spreading the gospel <coughs> message in our corner of the world. Winter is also a good time for each member of our congregation to start asking him or herself, how am I going to make sure that my heart is receiving the seed of God's word in the coming season? When I'm away on vacation or if I'm gone for work for weeks or even months, how am I going to supplement the Sunday services that I'll be missing? What other avenues can you take to grow in the coming months in the summer? Can you start making plans to attend one of our CLC events, women's retreat in March or the 20s and 30s retreat in June, the men's retreat in September? It's wise for Christians to plan these things, to plan the scattering of the seed of God's word both in our lives and in our hearts. The trouble, of course, comes when we make these plans without including the Lord. That's unwise. Jesus' first parable goes on to say that the one who scatters the seed sleeps and rises night and day, and the seed sprouts and grows. He knows not how. The earth produces by itself, first the blade, then the ear, then the full grain in the ear. When the grain is ripe, at once he puts in the sickle because the harvest has come. Man can make all the plans in the world. We can even scatter all the seed in the world. We could go door to door and flyer every single house in all of Detroit. But man cannot make the word grow. Only God can do that. And sometimes it's all too easy to become impatient with the word. Or not even trusting God's word. Many people that it think that it depends on human effort, even human cleverness, is necessary to grow the kingdom of God. And if you don't believe that, then you've never heard of the church growth movement. It's a whole new industry in our country. And it sounds pretty good, doesn't it? Church growth. Who's against church growth? Not me. Happy to see the church grow. But the philosophy of the church growth movement is that in order for the church growth to occur, you have to be very clever. We have to target certain demographic groups, especially young people, and minister to, not to their real needs, but rather to their felt needs, what they think they need to hear. It says that we have to make our church music just like the music that we find on the radio. We have to tailor our preaching not to what the truth is, but rather to what people want to hear. Usually a lot less doctrine, a lot more feeling and emotion. And if we compromise on a few minor doctrines here and there, well, that's just the price you pay for growth. But is that how real growth occurs in the heart or in the church? Is that the way to create and strengthen faith? Because remember, faith is the goal here. We're not shooting for big buildings or multitudes of programs, or even thousands of names on the membership roster. The thing that keeps people out of hell and saved for all eternity is faith. And the methods of the church growth movement have nothing to do with faith. Those things aren't the seed. The seed is the Word of God. And the Word of God, Jesus tells us, produces by itself. First the blade, then the ear, then the full grain in the ear. The power that makes the faith sprout and grow, the power that makes faith explode and produce fruits in people's lives and in the church, is wholly contained in the Word itself. By the way, that's why we in our Church of the Lutheran Confession focus so much of our attention on the Word of God. Because only the Word can create 
and strengthen faith. And so when we're making our seed scattering plans, either on a congregational level or in our personal lives, that's what we focus on, isn't it? The Word. And that's a wonderful relief to us, in fact. Because it means that you don't have to be clever. You don't have to be a marketing expert. You don't have to hire motivational speakers or rock bands. All we have to do is sow the Word in our community and in our lives. Our whole calling is to trust the powerful, divine word of God to sow it, to sow it steadily and faithfully. James says in his book, chapter 5, verse 7, Be patient, therefore, brothers, until the coming of the Lord. See how the farmer waits for the precious fruit of the earth, being patient about it. The fact is, while we can and should make plans to scatter the seed of God's word, it's God and God alone who can make real plans to give it real growth. That's kind of what the second parable of Jesus' word for today is all about. He says the kingdom of God is like a grain of mustard seed, which when sown on the ground is the smallest of all the seeds. Yet when it is sown, it grows up and becomes larger than all the garden plants and puts out large branches so that the birds of the air can make nests in its shade. Sometimes in life, the Word of God can seem so small and insignificant, like it can't possibly help, like it can't possibly make a difference in the world, like it can't possibly do anything here in our little corner in Madison Heights, Michigan, like it can't possibly salve the wounds of life's biggest problems, biggest challenges, biggest heartaches. The supposed smallness then of the word is implied with the image of a seed. And not just any seed, but a mustard seed, about the size of a grain of sand. In the world of farming, what is smaller, more ordinary looking, less promising than a tiny little mustard seed? And in our world, what appears smaller, more ordinary looking, and less promising than a Bible? It doesn't look like much. And yet there is no greater power on earth to make things grow. From a struggling congregation to a struggling marriage. Because the power in the seed of scripture is God's power. After all, how did God create the world in all its glory and all its vastness? Through his word. How did Jesus heal the ten lepers and the centurion's servant? Through his word. How did Jesus calm the crashing storm on the Sea of Galilee? You guessed it. Through his word. How did he raise dead Lazarus, or the daughter of Jairus, or the widow of Nain's son? It was through his word. And whom did Jesus call the wise builder? The person who builds his house and life on the word of God. And how did Jesus promise to grow his church? Through his word. On this rock, Jesus said in Matthew 16, I will build my church, and the gates of hell will not overcome it. And so at times we may not believe we're sharing very much when we share our love for Jesus, who he is, what he's done for us. We may not believe we're offering much when we offer the comfort of scripture to a friend or even a stranger who's lost a loved one. At times we may not believe we're accomplishing much through the ministry of our congregation. We may not think it's worth it to travel hundreds of miles away to some youth camp or some retreat or conference or convention. We may not believe any of these things because we don't always see the fruit. We don't always see the harvest from what those gospel seeds have planted. But God is working through the ministry of our congregation. And God is working through the seed scattering in your individual lives. And you can be sure of that because God's word says so. Remember what Isaiah said in chapter 55 of his book. As the rain and the snow come down from heaven and do not return there, but water the earth, making it bring forth and sprout, giving seed to the sower and bread to the eater, so shall my word be that goes forth from my mouth, and shall not return to me empty, but shall accomplish the thing for which I sent it, and shall succeed in its purpose. So the Almighty King uses his almighty word to grow his kingdom. Like the humble mustard seed grows into the largest plant on the farm. 
so too the word of God grows into the strongest and most impenetrable kingdom in the world. After all, he grew his kingdom in you, and he's still growing it in you. You have that faith which is inside your heart, that faith which trusts in Jesus' blood and righteousness for the forgiveness of all your sins. And so that's what we try to do here at Mount Zion Lutheran Church, in Madison Heights, Michigan, in our weekly Sunday services, and in our outreach, and in our personal lives. Just sow the powerful word of God. And let the word do the work. And that's what we all should continue to do. And yes, we certainly make use of every outward means that is appropriate for us to spread this powerful word. But always remembering at all times that the power is not in the one who scatters the seed, but rather it's in God who gives it growth. As Paul reminded the Corinthians, I planted, Apollos watered, but God gave the growth. So neither he who plants nor he who waters is anything, but only God who gives the growth. Winter planning for summer planting. It's mighty important for farmers. It's mighty important for Christians too. So may God grant us wisdom in our congregational plans and in our individual plans to scatter the seed of God's word in our community and in our lives. And may God grant us the faith to trust in that seed, to trust in his purpose, that word which produces all by itself according to God himself who gives it growth. In his gracious name, amen.